What's up everyone, it's your boy Mikhail Casanova coming to you with yet another video. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a review for what I think is one of the most phenomenal RPGs, JRPGs that is, to come out in quite some time. And that is I Am Setsuna. Now this originally came out on PlayStation 4 and PC about a year ago, and they've re-released it on the Nintendo Switch with exclusive content. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, that way you can stay up to date on the latest and greatest content. And if you want to, go ahead and check out my Patreon channel if you want to help support the channel and help it grow. Now, one thing about I Am Setsuna is if you're a fan of Chrono Trigger from back in the day, from 1996, then this is definitely the game you want to be playing. In a way, it's kind of like a sequel to it, and basically, in my opinion, towards the end of the game, you're going to see how it's basically a sequel to Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this review, and as you guys know, I love to say, play my intro music. Do you want to dance? If you're like me, you're probably going to say this. Do you remember the 90s when everyone loved JRPGs? Or even the early 2000s? Do you remember how great Chrono Trigger was? Wouldn't you like to return to those times? You know what? Let's go ahead and take it back to the JRPGs of our childhood. Basically, that's how the marketing campaign for I Am Setsuna goes. It's a promise of return to the good old days for us jaded adults who grew up in the, with great games like Chrono Trigger from a new branch of Square Enix that's called Tokyo RPG Factory. At 28 years old, I'm one of those people who grew up with those games. So that's what's, that was a tantalizing promise for me. How did it turn out? The Japanese title Akinie Tayuki no Setsuna. I probably butchered that. Don't flame. Had a lot of readings back into it. One way of literally translating it would be Setsuna of Snow and Sacrifice. But it also supposed to invoke an alternate reading of Setsuna. That means moment or juncture instead. And also Setsunasa or heart rending sadness. According to the director, it's one of those word plays that won't translate perfectly in the West. So they went for I Am Setsuna for the title. This game is really batting for the Chrono Trigger nostalgia, so it shouldn't be a surprise that the main character is silent except for dialogue prompts or audio cues. There is no voice acting for characters outside of battle shouts, which can also be turned off their existence is, you know, annoying your nostalgia. I'll, our protagonist is Ender. He's a man from a tribe of masked mercenaries who are known for their cold devotion to carrying out their clients' orders. So our story begins in earnest when a mysterious man gives Ender an assignment. Go to an island and find a girl named Setsuna. Kill her. And collect your check and go home. <laughs> the player will soon find out that Sasuna is what's known as a sacrifice. Every so often, a girl with a high magic ability is sent on a journey to a place called Land's End, where she offers her life to suppress the growth of the violent monsters that roam the cold island that this game takes place in. Ender will travel with Sasuna on her journey to Land's End maybe try to find some secrets behind the meaning of the sacrifices ritual and stay the ruined, perpetually snowing world along the way. As a side note, there is a possibility that this game is set in the Chrono Trigger timeline. Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross timeline. When you get close to the end, you'll understand. 
world, so I will leave it at that. The game's battle system is Active Time Battle, or ATB. Your party of three members hop seamlessly into battle from out of combat map just like a Chrono Trigger. You can choose either full active mode in which the enemy, in this case, the enemy turn gauges continue to fill while you're choosing your own actions, or wait mode where enemy gauges will pause when it's your turn. If you like fast paced, quick decision making, then you'll appreciate the active mode. While those who would prefer a more relaxing game can stick with wait mode. Add to the mix is the Sitsuma system, this time with a moment reading of the word. Whereas the name implies, if you press a button at the right moment, you activate extra effects. How it works is that each character has a Sitsuna gauge that can flow from 0 to 3. If it's got at least one in it, then you can perform time hits to add extra effects to your attacks, i.e. extra damage or healing, extra stats effects, or the like. In addition, a singularity can change or occur that will change some conditions of the battle to be more favorable to your party. This can be triggered at a set chance or forced to occur with certain abilities. Certain actions can cause your party to move in combat, and positioning may sometimes matters. For example, a cross slash link skill between Ender and Kuan can will only hit enemies in the pincer of their positions. Abilities can be equipped on characters, and certain abilities can be linked for chain arcs if all characters involved in the chain have their ATB gauge filled. Main characters will join the party as part of Sasuna's sacrifice guard, including the protective and mysterious Kuan in her adorable frog hoodie. A man who looks a bit too much like Arn because the game's plot acts like it wasn't already rigged enough for Final Fantasy X that it is. Just to list a couple. You'll be hounded by a black robed mysterious black robed mysterious man who wields a giant sickle. Hint hint. Wink, wink. Magus, we know it's you. Come out of hiding. And this guy is out to kill a sacrifice before she can accomplish her task. And journey through forests and mountains, town to town, on your journey to deliver Sitsuna to Land's End. It's trying to push a lot of your nostalgia buttons, is what I'm saying. Some things that you'll quickly learn to get used to are snow everywhere. It'll remind you of Chrono Trigger's Antiquity Era. The thing is, snow, given it's everywhere, honestly, it can get tired to trust you the same knee deep snow. With only a few icy caverns and old ruins to mix up the visual aesthetics. Something that would have made the repetitive scenery a lot more painful is if there was a lot of low times to lack. But I can say that on the Switch and also the PC and PS4 versions, that's also seamless. There is the potential of playing this on the Vita, but that is going to be a Japan exclusive, sadly. One of the game's main themes is sadness, and it does try hard to make the player sad. For me, it worked, and it never really felt forced, or sudden, or contrived. By the end of the game, I deeply cared for each of these characters. In particular, I felt the weight of what was happening. Every time there was a flashback or just a lengthy dialogue from Setsuna, it really tugs on your strings of your heart. You know what? As usual, it's really hard to talk about the story without spoiling things. But I felt like it really did an amazing job of accomplishing its task of telling me very hard wrenching story. But I will be honest, it wasn't awful at all. 
but it also wasn't original because it is EP. All of Final Fantasy X's plot. This game is also short. You can probably beat it in about 25 to 30 hours, maybe 20 if you're speed playing. If you do the end game side quests and grind for everything, you could probably tack on another 5 hours and take it to a total of 35. Thinking back, I guess Chrono Trigger wasn't all that long either, but the game is straightforward, which to some people they may like, others they won't. Honestly, I was left feeling hungry for more, and I would like there to be a sequel. It was as if I played Chrono Trigger and the game just ended right after I reached Magus' castle. I felt like there was more to the story that could have been told. But you know what? What happened happened. One thing you should definitely keep in mind is that this is not a budget game. This is a full-fledged game. This is a classic throwback RPG. But many will consider this a budget game. In Japan, it retailed for about two thirds the price of the normal new game. Here in the States, it's retail for about $39. Digitally, since that's the only way we can get our hands on it. So if you ever feel like there's a lack of polish or content, it's awful, also helpful to remember that this is being offered at a discounted rate compared to a brand new $659.99 to $62 game. Final verdict on I Am Tetsuna? It's definitely going to trigger nostalgia for you, and it's definitely worth your time, especially if you're a fan of games like Chrono Trigger. Where it falls short is creating new memories for itself. And it's fun, and it is. It is a fun enough diversion. But you probably won't be looking back on it fondly 20 years from now. And again, that's an insanely high standard to hold any game to. And I do give the people at Tokyo RPG Factory credit for trying to do something that it didn't quite deliver fully on, but the hype was real. Treat it for what it is, for a trip down nostalgia, and you'll find your money's worth out of this experience. And that just about wraps up this review for I Am Setsuna. If you guys haven't, I swear you guys will love this game. This game is simply phenomenal. I just, I need to show you some of this game again. It's just... You know what? I just let me, let me play something for you for a minute, okay? Can I play something for you guys? All right. You see that? Try E for everyone. Just listen to that music. Does that not get you pumped? That's about all y'all can get, so go out and buy the game. Support Square Enix. I know a lot of people are tired of all the Final Fantasy and King Mars games coming out, so if you want them to have more IPs or bring back older IPs and do different things, then go out and support the company. Because Tokyo RPG Factory is a smaller company within Square, and it's the fact that they've done what they've done with this, being able to take a battle system and concept from 1996 and bring it into the year 2016, 2017, is just phenomenal. If you want more games like this, I love classic RPGs. I really do. And I'm, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the latest style of JRPGs that are coming out or Western RPGs. And, I like being able to play something that's a throwback. So if you guys want more stuff like that, then please support these companies, support the developers so they can put out more content for you, okay? Well, that wraps up this video. So 
subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Check out my Patreon, links in the description below. And then tell me what you think, also down below. And I'll catch you in the next one. Deuces wild. Everybody drinks on me. Everybody in this bitch drink for free. Give me a whiskey double. A little bit of deck is always trouble. And I'm feeling good. Like the man with only need to prove a reason's wood. Next up, straight to the DJ. Tell him play whatever song she said. Her body is a misdemeanor. Dangerous, but I